Welcome to this NPTEL course on robotics, basics and advanced concepts. In the last lecture, we had looked at the direct kinematics of serial robots. In this lecture, we'll look at the inverse kinematics of serial robots. To recapitulate, in the last lecture, the direct kinematics problem was stated. And the direct kinematics problem is, given the DH parameters, find the position and orientation of the end effector. I had shown you three examples, a planar example, a Puma 560 example, and the SCARA robot. The direct kinematics can always be solved for any number of links. Okay, It just simply involves multiplication of matrices. Okay. So there is no reason why we cannot multiply matrices. And hence, for any number of links you give me, I need to obtain the link transformation matrices and then just multiply in some appropriate order. The direct kinematics in serial manipulator is unique. Okay, So there is only one possible solution to the direct kinematics problem. And the direct kinematics problem for serial manipulator is the simplest problem. In this lecture, we'll look at the inverse kinematics of a serial robot. So what is the inverse kinematics problem? To restate it once more, given the constant DH link parameters and the position and orientation of the last link or the end effector, 0 and t, find the joint variables theta i, i equals 1 through n. OK, so what are the constant DH link parameters? Just to recapitulate, we have a twist angle, we have a link length, and either a link offset or a link rotation, depending on what kind of joint it is. To continue, for 3D motion, we have six task space variables, so three position and three orientation in this transformation matrix 0 and T. Okay, and for planar motion, there are three task space variables, two position, let's say x and y, and one orientation in this given transformation matrix. So there are following cases which are possible now. So if n is equal to 3 for planar motion or n is equal to 6 for 3D motion, we have the same number of equations as same number of unknowns. Okay, just how, what do you mean by same number of equations? In 0 and t, we know that there are independent equations coming from the rotation matrix and from the last column, which is the position vector. If n is 6, then in the 0 and t, we can get three equations from the rotation part and three from the translation part. Okay, And hence, we have six task space variables and we have six joint variables, n is equal to 6. For n less than 6 for 3D motion, or n less than 3 for planar motion, the number of task space variables are larger than the number of equations. And hence, there must be 6 minus n for spatial and 3 minus n for planar relationships involving the task space variables. Okay, So if you recollect in the SCARA robot, the motion, it is a 4 degree of freedom robot. Okay, and the end effector can be determined by position, can be determined by x, y, z, and one orientation. So, although the end effector is moving in 3D space, there are the two other angles, orientation angles, are not there. Okay, so hence there are some constraints between the task space variables. If n is greater than 6 for 3D motion or n is greater than 3 for planar motion, we have more unknowns than equations. Okay, and hence infinite number of solutions. These are a special class of manipulators which are called redundant manipulators, and we will be looking at them in detail later. So let's start the inverse kinematics problem for the simplest case of a planar 3R manipulator. Okay, so the figure in this slide shows a planar 3R manipulator. Basically, there are three rotary joints at O1, O2, and O3. Okay, the direct kinematics equation are known. 
So we can obtain the X, Y, and orientation of the tool coordinate system or the third coordinate system as given by L1, C1 plus L2, C1, 2 plus L3, C1, 2, 3. And Y is the L1 into sine theta 1, L2 into sine theta 1 plus theta 2, and L3 into sine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. And the orientation of the tool coordinate system or the nth coordinate system, in this case n is 3, is given by theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. So what is the inverse kinematics problem for this planar 3 are manipulated? We are given x, y, and phi, the left-hand side of these equations, and we want to obtain theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. Okay, so what you can see is these are three nonlinear equations. So the first two involve sine and cosine of angles. Okay, so they are nonlinear transcendental equations. The third one is linear. So in order to solve these three nonlinear equations, or two nonlinear and one linear equation, we do not have any general method to solve nonlinear transcendental equations. Okay. The solution of nonlinear transcendental equations depend on the problem. Okay. This is unlike a linear set of equations, a set of linear equations where we can easily solve if you have y equals a x, we can always find solution x for a given y, provided certain conditions are met on that matrix A. So how, what do we do? So what we can do is we can see that we can define a new variable capital X, which is x minus L3 cos phi, and a capital Y, which is y minus L3 sine phi. Okay. So x and y, capital X and capital Y are known. Because since small x, small y, and phi are given, this is the inverse kinematics problem. So if you now add and square and add capital X squared plus capital Y squared, we can see that you will get L1 squared plus L2 squared plus 2 L1 ln 2 cosine phi, cosine theta 2. Okay, not cosine phi, cosine theta 2. Hence, from equation 5, we can show that theta 2 is cos inverse of x square plus y square minus l1 square minus l2 square divided by 2 l1 l2. Okay, so what have we done? We have started from these three equations. We have defined capital X as x minus l3 cosine phi. So this has gone there. So capital X is now l1 c1 plus l2 c1 2. Capital Y is also L1 S1 plus L2 S1 2. So when you square and add capital X and capital Y, so L1 C1 squared plus L1 S1 squared, theta 1 will go away. Likewise, theta 1 2 will go away and we'll be left with only this equation. Capital X squared plus Y squared is L1 squared plus L2 squared plus 2 L1 L2 C2. And we can find theta 2. Okay, so I'm go going over this a little slowly because we can easily see what we are trying to do. Okay. Once theta 2 is known, we can find out what is theta 1 by doing this a tan 2 y comma x minus a tan 2 k2 k1. Okay, where k2 is l2 s2 and k1 is l1 l2 c2. Okay, so basically what are we doing? We are saying capital X is some L1 C1 plus L2 C1 2. So we can expand C1 2 as cos A cos B minus sin A sin B and so on. And then take terms which are in theta 2 which is now known and solve for theta 1. Okay, So we are going to use A times 2 again such that we can get this theta 1 in the correct quadrant. And then finally, theta 3 is obtained from phi minus theta 1 minus theta 2. So as you can see, we have used some knowledge of trigonometry to first find theta 2. Then we have eliminated, taken terms which are now known and solved for theta 1. And then finally, theta 3 is simply phi minus theta 1 minus theta 2. Okay. So let's continue. 
So do, can we solve this inverse kinematics problem everywhere? Okay, the answer is no. Why? Because if you look at this equation, theta 2 is plus minus cos inverse of something. So whatever is inside this bracket, which is x square plus y square minus L1 square minus L2 square divided by 2 L1 L2, that must be within plus minus 1. Because only cos inverse of a number which is within plus minus 1 is defined. Okay, so hence we can say that this condition must always be true, which is minus 1 less than or equal to this quantity x squared plus y squared minus L1 squared minus L2 squared divided by 2 L1 L2. It should lie between plus minus 1. And we can now simplify this and write it as capital X squared plus y squared should be greater than L1 minus L2 whole square and less than L1 plus L2 whole square. And finally, we can substitute back x, capital X, as x minus L3 cos phi and y minus L3 sin phi. Okay, the figure in this right-hand side shows a plot of small x, small y, and angle phi. Okay, so every section, every section represents a circle of radius uh, between L1 plus L2 whole square and L1 minus L2, L2 whole square. And then if you substitute back this L X minus L3 cos phi and Y minus L3 sin phi, you will get this complicated looking figure. Okay, so hence only points which are lying between these big circles and small circles, X, Y and phi, and phi is along the vertical direction, you can only find cosine inverse of that number. Okay, so this is called the workspace of the planar robot. So all x, y, and phi, which is inside these region, which is shown here, I can solve the inverse kinematics. You can also try and see what is exactly happening a little bit more detail. So I can project all these circles back to the xy plane. So I will get one, the following circles. So I will get one completely outside circle, which is L1 plus L2 plus L3. There will be also one small inside circle, which is L1 minus L2 minus L3. And then there are these two other circles. One is L1 plus L2 minus L3, and one is L1 minus L2 plus L3. Okay, so this is nothing but the projection of those that figure onto the XY plane. Okay, so we have these four circles. So now if you pick a point on this region between L1 minus L2 plus L3 and L1 plus L2 minus L3, so this is the point. As you can see, so this point is nothing but capital X capital Y. Okay, it is small x minus L3 cos phi and small y minus L3 sin phi. So this capital X capital Y, this is the point. And I can reach this point in two ways. So the planar robot can be like this and it could be like, and it could be like this. Okay, that is what is meant by there are two possible solutions for theta 2. So if you go back and see there are two possible solutions of theta 2 plus minus cosine inverse of this. Okay. And geometrically what is happening? One is like this. So this is the angle theta 2 and the other one is minus theta 2 to reach that same capital X and capital Y. So the reachable workspace is defined as all X, Y between the maximum reach which is L1 plus L2 plus L3 and minimum reach, which is L1 minus L2 minus L3. We can also define something called as a dexterous workspace. And this is all x, y between the radius L1 plus L2 minus L3 and L1 minus L2 plus L3. Okay, so all points inside the dexterous workspace can be reached with any phi. So as the size L3 increases, what you can see that the dexterous workspace will become smaller. Okay, 
the reachable workspace will increase because it is L1 plus L2 plus L3, okay? Whereas the dexterous workspace is L1 plus L2 minus L3, okay? So this is a well-known result which was obtained a long time back and it's a very nice result which says that as the size of the end effector L3 increases, reachable workspace increases and dexterous workspace decreases. So this is also sort of intuitively correct. So if you are holding a long stick, you can reach far away. Okay, you can reach the roof of the uh, room. But if you use a long stick, at the end, you have very little freedom in orienting the tip. Okay, so that is the whole idea of a dexterous workspace. I can reach any point with whatever orientation I feel I want. Let's go back to again that equation of theta 2. Okay, so I showed you theta 2 is plus minus cos inverse this. So hence, for any x, y, there are two possible values of theta 2. Okay, and these two values merge at the workspace boundary. So at a given x, y can be achieved by two configurations as shown in the figure. I showed you this figure that if I take any point capital X, Y here, I can reach either like this or I can reach like this. So one of them is plus theta 2 and the other one is minus theta 2. Okay. So in general, what we can say is for a planar 3R manipulator, given X, Y and phi, we can obtain this X, Y and phi by two sets of values of theta 1, 2, and 3. Okay. So, in conclusion, the inverse kinematics problem does not give unique solutions. Okay. Remember, in direct kinematics, we always could get a unique solution. Okay. Multiplying matrices given thetas, I could find the position and orientation of the end effector uniquely. In the inverse kinematics problem, given the position and orientation of the end effector, I get in this case of a planar 3R, two possible sets of values of theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. Okay, so in general or more abstractly, what we have is something called as the existence and uniqueness issues in solution of nonlinear equation. Okay, so it is quite hard and non-trivial to obtain the existence and uniqueness conditions for solution of nonlinear equations. In this case, uniqueness means what? We have two possible sets, okay? It, the solutions are not unique. And existence means what? We can obtain the values of x, y, and phi such that we can get an inverse kinematic solution, okay? So all x, y, phi for which inverse kinematic solution exists, okay? That, that that gives us this existence criteria. And uniqueness criteria is how many possible joint angles satisfies the given x, y, and phi. Now let's continue. We'll look at a six degree of freedom, Puma 560 robot. This has been shown earlier also. There are six joints. One is along Z1. One is along Z2, then Z3, and then there are three more which are intersecting at this point, which is the point of intersection of axis 4, 5, and 6. Okay, So this origins of 4, 5, and 6 are coincident, and this is called the wrist point. So it turns out that the position vector of this wrist point is only a function of theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. Okay, So these are the three equations. So O6x, which is shortened as x, is given by C1 into A2C2 plus A3C23 minus D4S23 minus D3S1 and so on. Okay. So does this make sense? Yes. If you think about it a little bit, that the joints, the links 4, 5, and 6 after the joint axis 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so hence 
the position vector which is lying on the joint four axis, five axis or six axis because all of them are at the same place, can only a be a function of all the angles before this origin. And what are the angles? One is theta one, one is theta two, and one is theta three. The theta four, theta five, and theta six affect the orientation of the end effector. It does not affect the origin of the last link. Okay, so how do we solve the inverse kinematics of the puma? So basically, what are we given? We are given x, y, and z, and fortunately, we now have three equations in three unknowns. Okay, what are the unknowns? Theta one, theta two, and theta three. So from this first two equations, if you multiply the first equation by minus s one and the second equation by plus C1, S1 is sine theta 1, C1 is cos theta 1, and add them, you can see everything drops out, and we get a nice simple equation which is minus S1x plus C1y is d3. Okay, so you'll get d3 into S1 square, d3 into C1 square. When you add them, they'll become 1. Okay, so we have a single transcendental equation in theta 1. Okay, so how do we solve this? So the kinematics people have figured out this really nice way of trying to solve a single transcendental equation. So the idea is that we convert a transcendental equation into a polynomial. Okay, and how can we do that? Let's define a new variable x1, which is tan theta 1 by 2. Okay, so if x1 is tan theta 1 by 2, cos theta 1 is 1 minus x1 square divided by 1 plus x1 square. And sin theta 1 is 2x1 divided by 1 plus x1 square. So hence, minus s1x plus c1y is d3 can be written as a quadratic in x1. And remember, x1 is tan theta 1 by 2. So what have we done? We have taken a transcendental equation in sine and cos theta 1 and obtain a quadratic in tan theta 1 by 2. Okay, so this is the well-known tangent half angle formulas for trigonometry. So once I have a quadratic of this form, I can easily solve for x1. You know, quadratic equations, we know the roots of a quadratic equation in closed form. And then we can find out theta 1, which is tan inverse of that quantity. And since we are finding out theta 1 by 2, so actual theta 1 is 2 into tan inverse of the roots of the quadratic equation. Okay, so a few observations. So tan inverse gives an angle between 0 and pi normally. So hence, 2 tan inverse gives the value between 0 and 2 pi. So we are getting the angle in the right quadrant. So we don't have to use a tan 2 here. This idea of a tangent half angle makes ensures or makes us get an angle which is in the right quadrant. The second observation is we get two possible values of theta 1 due to this plus minus sign in the square root. Okay, so again, uniqueness, no. Okay, so given x, y, and z in this form of equation of the risk point, I, I am getting a value of theta 1, which are two of them. Okay, so, so this is not unique. Okay, very similar to the previous case of the planar 3R case, where we could get two possible values of an angle, which satisfies a given position and orientation. In this case, two possible values of theta 1, which for a given wrist point. Okay, let's continue. If you square and add those three equations, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, you can see that you will end up with a single equation in theta 3. Okay, so is this correct? Yes. So x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So theta 1 will vanish theta 2 will also vanish, it turns out, because you can see the pattern. It is minus a2s2, minus a3s23, minus d4c23, whereas here it is, uh, you know, plus and minus, sort of very similar. 
but here it is C2, here it is S2. Okay. So if you expand the square and adding that expression and do a little bit of simplification, you can get a single equation in cosine theta 3 and sine theta 3. Okay. Again, this is a transcendental equation in cosine and sine theta 3. We can again use the tangent half angle formulas to obtain theta 3. So here also you can see that you get two sets of values of theta 3. Okay. Again, square uh, solutions of the quadratic equation where k is a constant. Okay. Finally, we can see that the last equation z is function of only theta 2 and theta 3. Okay, so now that we know theta 3, we can collect terms with our theta 3 inside this bracket. And again, we have a simple transcendental equation in theta 2. So minus S2 into something which is now known, C2 into something which is now known is equal to Z. Okay, and we can solve this again using tangent half angle substitution and we'll get theta 2 as 2 tan inverse of really complicated long expression. Okay, so how many values of theta 2 we get? We get four possible values of theta 2. Why? Because theta 3 already had two possible values and theta 2 depends on theta 3. So you can see it is A3, C3 is there. A3, C3, D4, S3, all these terms are here. Okay. So we get four possible values of theta 2 in the range 0 to 2 pi. To obtain theta 4, 5, and 6, which is basically the last three angles after the rest, you can see that the rotation matrix 3, 6, R is of this form. Okay, it is C4, C5, C6, minus S4, S6. Okay, R11 is this. R23 is C5. R21 is S5, C6, and so on. Okay, this matrix 3, 6, R is also can be written as 0, 3, R transpose into 0, 6, R. Right? Because 0, 6, R is 0, 3, 3, 6, R, pre-multiply by the inverse, which is the same as the, as the transpose, and we get this matrix equation. The right-hand side is known because 0, 6, R is given to you for the inverse kinematics problem. And 0, 3, R contains only theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. So basically, right-hand side is known. And left-hand side, has three variables, four, five, and six. Okay, so we can just compare term by term and find out what is theta four, theta five, and theta six. So for example, C five will be equal to some known number. So theta five will be cos inverse of that known number. It turns out that in this case, it is even simpler. Why? Because this matrix is very similar to what is called as the Z, Y, Z Euler angles with the Y rotation of minus theta 5. Okay, so last week we had looked at Euler angles, representation of orientation of a rigid body using simple rotations. So we have in this example a simple rotation about Z, a simple rotation followed by a simple rotation about Y, and another simple rotation about Z. However, unlike what we had done earlier, the second rotation is by a minus angle theta 5. Okay, So we can write the inverse Euler angle transformation just like we had done uh, last week. So given Rij, how do I find out theta 4, theta 5, and theta 6? Again, there is a singular configuration when R23 is plus minus 1. So if R23 is not equal to plus minus 1, theta 5 can be first found, found out by A tan 2 plus minus R21 squared plus R22 squared comma R23. Is it true? Yes, R21 squared plus R22 squared. And then this will be a function of only sine theta 5 and cos theta 5. And we can use A tan 2 to find theta 5. Then we can divide by sine theta 5 and find theta 4, again using an A tan 2. And theta 6 divided by sine theta 5 
these two minus R22 and R21 and find theta 4, theta 5 and theta 6. If R23 is plus 1, this is a special or a singular configuration, we set theta 4 as 0, theta 5 as 0 and theta 6 this. If R23 is minus 1, then we set theta 4 as 0, theta 5 as pi, and theta 6 this. Okay. So in summary, what have we done? We have obtained two sets of theta 1, two sets of theta 3. Since theta 3 appears on the right-hand side of equation 14, okay, so four possible values of theta 2. And then we also have two possible sets of theta 4, 5, and 6. Okay, because you can see theta 5 has plus minus sign here. So I can get two possible theta 5 and then when we divide it by theta 5, you'll get two possible values of theta 4 and theta 6. Okay, so overall, what have we obtained? We have obtained eight possible sets of joint angles theta i for a given position and orientation of the sixth link with respect to the zeroth link given 0, 6, t. Okay, now let's see whether you can discuss a little bit about the workspace of this robot. So basically, under what condition the inverse kinematic solution exists. Okay, so usual definition that all position and orientation of the sixth coordinate system such that the inverse kinematic solution exists. In this case, it is very difficult to imagine or even visualize or describe because it's a six dimensional entity. We have three positions, X, Y, Z, and three orientation. It is possible to derive the position workspace of the wrist point. Why? Because we know that the position vector of the wrist point is X, Y, and Z, and they are functions of only theta one, theta two, and theta three, and the constant DH parameters, okay? So x, y, z are functions of three independent variables, theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. So it represents a solid in 3D space, okay? So it's like a solid region in 3D space where the inverse kinematics exist, solution exists. We can find the bounding surfaces of the solid region, okay? And how do we find out that? So here are the steps. So if you square and add these three equations, let's call that as R square, which is X square plus Y square plus Z square. We can see it's a function of only theta three. Okay, K1, K2, K3 are constant. So this is a family of surfaces. Okay, so if X, Y, Z, X square plus Y square plus Z square was equal to constant, that is a, that is a sphere. Okay, but then, as theta 3 changes, we have a family of surfaces. The envelope of this family of surfaces can be obtained by taking the partial derivative of this equation with respect to this variable theta 3, which is on the right hand side. If you take this, we'll get one single equation k2 s3 plus k3 c3 equal to 0. And then we eliminate theta 3 from these two equations. Okay, so we can eliminate in formally using Sylvester's method, but we can just simply see that we can eliminate theta 3 and denote, if you denote a3 squared plus d4 squared by l squared, we will get this expression, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So basically, this is the radius vector. The distance from the origin is minus some, some number, and this is also minus. So it's a bounding surfaces are two spheres, okay? So there's a sphere which is at a distance of surface is A2 plus L squared plus D3 squared, and the, the other is A2 minus L squared plus D3 squared, okay? So we have two spheres, which are the bounding surfaces of this solid region where the inverse kinematic solution exists. And at all X, Y, Z, where this inverse kinematic solution exists, we can find the orientation except two special singular configurations when R23 is plus minus one. Okay. So 
let's look at a numerical example. Okay, so this is taken from literature. The DH parameter of a Puma 560, the constant values are given in this table. We have chosen eta i arbitrarily as 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 135, 30, minus 45 and 120. And these numbers, 0 0.4318 for AI minus 1 for link 3, and DI is 0 0.125, and so on. This is from literature. Okay, so Puma robot comes with these DH tables. So once we have this DH table, and once I give you this theta, then I can find out 0, 060. So this is a 4 by 4 homogeneous transformation matrix. The last row is 0, 0, 0, 001. The rotation matrix is this top 3 by 3, and the position vector of the sixth or the last coordinate system is given by 0 0.1304, 3071, and 0 0.0482. Okay, this is just multiplication of six matrices derived from taking each row of the DH table. We can now take this 0, 060, okay, and run our inverse kinematic steps, whatever we have discussed. Okay, what are the inverse kinematic steps? We first find out theta 1, then find out theta 3, then find out theta 2, and then find out theta 4, 5, and 6, okay, using those steps which I have discussed a few minutes back. So it turns out that I will get eight possible solution sets. We expect eight possible solution sets. So, okay, so theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4, theta 5, and theta 6. And the solution sets, each row corresponding to a single solution set. So as you can see, the set 7, 45, 60, 135, 30, minus 45, 120, is what we started with here in the DH table. Okay, so that makes sense, right? Because I took a set of constant DH parameters and a val set of values of thetas. I obtained the 0, 6 transformation matrix and then I run the, put that same data set and run the inverse kinematics. So one of the solution sets better be what we started with. Okay, and that is indeed true. What is the workspace looks like? We know it is bounded by two spheres. Okay, so there is an outside sphere and there is an inside sphere. Interestingly, there is also some kind of a small hollow region where it is not reachable. Okay, so it's like a cylinder with some spheres. And so the workspace of a Puma robot, the wrist point looks like these two spheres bounded by two spheres. So let's just quickly review the inverse kinematics, whatever we have done till now. So first important observation is to solve the inverse kinematics problems, we have to deal with transcendental equations. Okay, so the first step is we can obtain polynomial equations using tangent half angle substitution. So the polynomial equation is always of a higher degree. So if you have sine theta and cos theta, it will become quadratic in x square, where x is tan theta by 2. Okay. For analytical solutions to the inverse kinematics problem, we have to eliminate joint variables from a set of nonlinear equations in several joint variables. Okay. So what do we want? We want a single equation in one joint variable. That is very useful or important. So in the case of the planar three-year example, we started with three equations in three joint variables. We obtained two equations in theta one and theta two, remember capital X and capital Y. And then we obtained one equation in theta two alone. Okay, so this single equation was solved for theta 2 and then we solve for theta 1 and theta 3. For the Puma 560, we have three equations in three joint variables, the wrist point. Okay, so the position and orientation could be decoupled 
okay we could just take the position equations and solve for three angles and then using those three angles we could solve for the last three joint angles okay which is which uses the orientation information so this decoupling of position and orientation was first noticed by piper in 68 for manipulators with intersecting rest okay intersecting rest means the last three joint angles joint axis intersect at a point this was eventually generalized to any 6 degree of freedom serial manipulator where three consecutive joint axes intersect okay it was shown that at most a fourth order polynomial in the tangent of a joint angle is what we will get okay so the rest point can reach any position in the workspace in at most four possible ways okay because we have four possible solutions of the tangent of the joint angle and this fourth degree polynomial which we get can be solved in closed form this is very important uh, we can solve a quadratic equation in closed form we can solve a cubic equation in closed form and we can also solve a quadratic equation in closed form any polynomial higher than 4 we cannot solve in closed closed form okay so it turns out that the inverse kinematics of all 6 degree of freedom serial manipulators with three consecutive intersecting axes can be solved in closed form okay it's a very useful and neat result so for the puma 560 the workspace of the rest point is bounded by two spheres and requires the solution of only a quadratic okay we don't have to solve a quadratic equation for a puma because of the special geometry so you know some axes are intersecting some axes are parallel and so on it was shown eventually that for a general geometry robot with intersecting rest the boundaries traced by the rest point form a torus okay so they are not spheres they are this solids or surfaces called torus which is a fourth degree surface okay a sphere is second order second degree a torus is fourth degree let's continue what happens if you have non intersecting rest so intersecting rest problem is more or less solved you know we have four solutions quartic and then we can do this inverse euler angle transformation and find the last three angles however it is very very difficult to manufacture three intersecting axis rest why because it is sort of you can imagine that you have three lines which are meeting at a point and then we are going to manufacture this or locate these three motors such that their axis intersect at a point it will it will never happen manufacturing wise okay it is much easier if two rests if the rest has two intersecting axes okay so here is an example of a robot with uh, the last two axes intersecting and then again previous two axes intersecting but not all three intersecting at the same place okay so schematically it is shown here theta 4 and theta 5 intersects at the same place and theta 5 and theta 6 intersect at the same place but all of them don't intersect at the same place so the dh table for this robot this is a well known welding robot which was built long time back is very similar to the puma except there is a d5 here okay that and this d5 is non zero okay so the d5 is the last this joint link offset for the fifth link okay so it's a 6 degree of freedom robot first three joints are very similar to the puma 560 the last three axes do not intersect there is an offset d5 so from the dh table we can compute 0 1 1 and all the way till 0 60 okay so if you compute 060 the last column of 060 which is the position of the last link with respect to the fixed link can be shown to be a function of now four joint angles 
okay it is theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and also theta 4 okay so if d5 were to be 0 we will get back the equations of the puma but however there are these additional terms d5 s4 s2 3 d5 s1 c4 minus c1 s4 c2 3 and so on okay so what can we notice we can see that the x y and z okay the end origin of the sixth coordinate system or the last link is now a function of theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and theta 4 so we have three equations in four unknowns okay so we need one more equation in the fourth join variables and how can we obtain this as follows we can rewrite the 3 6 r which is the rotation matrix of the sixth link with respect to the third link as product of two rotation matrices 0 3 r transpose 0 6 r okay symbolically it is shown here so this 0 3 6 r is very similar to what we had for the puma 0 3 r transpose will be a function of theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and 0 6 r is given to us we are trying to solve the inverse kinematics problem so basically we have one side theta 4 5 and 6 and we have another side theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 so if you divide the 1 comma 3 term which is minus c4 s5 and 3 comma 3 term which is s4 s5 so theta 5 not equal to 0 because we cannot divide 0 by 0 we can get one equation which is s4 into whatever is there on the right side which is r13 c1 c23 r13 and so on will be equal to c4 into something else where the rij's in this equation are known but theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 are unknowns so this is an equation which involves theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and the given rij's okay and hence this is the fourth equation okay we had three equations in x y and z and somehow we have managed to derive a fourth equation again in terms of theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and theta 4 okay so we have four equations in four unknowns and we can at least solve numerically these equations to obtain theta 1 2 3 and 4 okay and once theta 1 2 3 and 4 is obtained we can find theta 4 5 and 6 by again this inverse Euler angle algorithm similar to the puma okay z minus y z so let's look at a numerical example the 0 6 t is same as the puma example okay we have taken the same set of angles and the same dh parameters and we assume d5 is 20 mm okay. this is reasonable because the last link offset is small okay it is not very large so if we solve these four equations in matlab using this root solve using this solution program called f solve okay how many of you have heard f solve i don't know but there is a way to solve nonlinear equations in matlab numerically using this routine called f-solve and we will get theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and theta 4 okay so it's a numerical procedure so we will have to have a certain guess okay and then it will converge to the final solution and it turns out we will get theta 1 as 41.82 theta 2 as 60.43 theta 3 as 135 theta 4 as 31.96 okay and using inverse Euler algorithm we get two sets of values of theta 4 theta 5 and theta 6 okay and we can see one theta 4 matches okay just to give you some confidence that our numerical solution is okay so theta 4 is 31.96 here also one of the theta 4 is 31.96 okay if theta 5 were 0 or pi this is a singular configuration and we can only solve theta 4 plus minus theta 6 
Okay, so do we know these numbers are okay? Yes, because what have we done? We have added a d5, which is a small number. Okay, what was theta 1 before? For the Puma, it was 45. Theta 2 was 60. Theta 3 was 135. Theta 4 was 30. So although we have added an offset, it is sort of close to what we started with, the Puma example. So it gives us more or less confidence that this numerical solution is correct. Okay, so in summary, the inverse kinematics problem is defined as given end affected position and orientation and all the constant dh parameters obtain the joint variables. Okay, so the number of joint variables must be three for planar motion and six for 3D motion. Okay, only then we have the equal number of equations and equal number of unknowns. The inverse kinematics involve solutions of a set of nonlinear transcendental equations. So there are no general approach of inverse kinematics of serial robots. Okay. The existence of solution leads to the notion of workspace of a serial manipulator. So we looked at the planar 3R example and showed that cos inverse of something, that something should lie between plus minus one, and then that gives this whole idea of a workspace of the planar robot. The order of the polynomial, the single polynomial, which you obtain to find one of the joint variables, gives you the number of possible configurations for a given end effector position and orientation. Okay, so, In the case of planar 3R robot, the IK inverse kinematics could be easily solved. We could also give this notion of a reachable workspace and a dexterous workspace. So we could find what is the farthest the robot can reach and what is the region in the workspace where you could achieve arbitrary orientation. The Puma 560 has eight, pos eight possible configurations and we'll see later on in this week that the general six degree of freedom robot has 16 possible configurations. Okay, so with this, I will stop. In the next lecture, we will look at two special kinds of serial robots, one in which the number of joint angles is less than six and the number of joint angle is greater than six.